All right, so here we are, 4.2. Workplace Apprenticeship 24.2. This will be the first video for 4.2. And we've been dealing with um, trig functions, right, in Chapter 4. Sine, cosine, and tangent is the third one. Yeah. Sine, cosine, tangent. So, ka? Toa. Toa. Those help us to know which uh, sides of the triangle uh, go with which. So, uh, so is SOH, ka is CAH, and TOA is TOA. And so that means the sine of an angle equals the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tangent equals opposite divided by adjacent. So we know that from previous. Okay, so this section is all about working with two or more triangles. So complex, kind of complex problems in the real world. So if we have a situation where we're trying to find different lengths of things. Um, it, these are multi-step problems, which make them a little more complex. And you, so you have something like this in example one, where you have two right triangles, and you're asked for this side right here, that side length, this one, and you're also asked for this one. Okay, and so what you have to do is um, you have to try and see what am I given. And how can I use that to solve for one of the unknowns? And you might, you might have to solve for a side that isn't one of the ones you're looking for. You might have to solve for that one first. That might be something you have to do. So you kind of have to take a look at what you're given and see what you can do. Okay, so can I solve for Y right now? Am I given enough information to solve for Y? Okay, you said no. Why is it no? Okay, so very good. So we have this, this triangle right here, okay? And you're going to need two pieces of information. It's a right triangle, so you're going to need either two sides or you're going to need an angle and a side uh, to solve, right? Or to find a missing piece. And so right now we have an angle, but we don't have any of the sides. They're all unknown, so we can't start with this triangle, okay? But can we start with the other triangle, I guess, is the question. So the other triangle, let's, let's highlight it in red here, right, is this one. So I have, in this one, I have an angle and I have one of the sides. And I could solve for this x right away, you see. So there's that triangle and I can solve for the unknown x. Now, the second thing you have to do then is decide which trig function we're going to use to solve for x. And of course, you have the solution there in your, in your notebooks, uh, in your workbooks there. So, I know you can look and see the answer, but what you want to do if you didn't have that answer, you're just sitting there using cos, how would you decide? Well, here's the angle. We're not given the opposite side, so you're not going to want to use sine or tangent. We're given the adjacent side, so where is a? Ah, okay, it's here, and I want to solve for the hypotenuse, h. So that means that cosine is the winner for solving for x. You see that? Adjacent and x is hypotenuse. So those are the ones we want to use. So cosine of 40 equals adjacent side 6.4 divided by hypotenuse, which I don't know, and that's x. And so if you want to solve for x, you want to get x by itself and positive and in the numerator. And there's a little shortcut that we've been learning here that if you have the x on the bottom and a number or a value on top, on the other side, you can always just switch them across the equal sign. And that's really the same as multiplying both sides by x, and then dividing both sides by cos of 40. That gets you x equals 6.4 over cos 40. And we see that that's the same as just switching the x and that value. Okay. All right, so um, if we look here at the solution, 6.4 over cos 40, that is 8.4. We can now use this value right here of 8.4 that we just found, and we could solve for y because this is the opposite side, and this is the, what is y compared to 68 here? Adjacent. It's the adjacent side, so opposite and adjacent, and you have tan, and so then you're going to use tan to solve for y. Okay, and that's what they did here. All right, so let's do a question. This is a, this question number one here, um, is a bit of a tricky question because we can't solve for x right away. We're going to have to solve for something else first. And actually, there's really there's two things we have to figure out 
um, before we can solve for x. So any idea where we might want to start here for question number? Start that, uh, top triangle? Okay, if we start at the top triangle here like this. So I'm, what am I given there in the top triangle? I'm given a length of the side. Anything else? I'm not given anything else, but can I find anything else with that one? Or let's take a look at the triangle that has the x on it, guys. This is 90. I have 37. I don't have this side length. I don't have this side length. So I can't just solve for x right away. You can find an angle. Okay, which angle? Okay, so you know how the triangle has to equal 180, right? Ah, the angles of a triangle have to equal 180. So there's this one. There's this one, and there's this one. So 90, which is this one right here, plus 37, which is this one right here, plus our unknown angle, let's just call it A, you said has to equal 180. Okay, so I could get this angle right away, and that's going to be a big deal. That's exactly what you want to do first. So A is 180 degrees minus these two guys. Okay, so minus 90, get it over here as a minus 90. Get this one over here as a minus 37, you see. So what's A there then? It's 53 degrees. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. And if you don't really know what to do, just, just write down everything that you can find, like in anything you can find, and then something will kind of pop out to you and say, hey, now I can start to solve some different things. Okay, so this is 53, we said. Awesome. So now, can I solve for x right now? No. Uh, not quite, right? Not quite. Um, you could solve for that little line that's dividing up the triangle. Yep. Yeah, I could solve for this one right here. And that's exactly what we want to do. So how can I use the uh, angle of 53 and this side of 4.9? What trig ratio could I use to solve for this length right there? Well, 53. I'm involving the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Opposite and the hypotenuse. It's the so. Very good. So I've got sine uh, 53 equals unknown side over 4.9. Now, if you've got the unknown side on top, you don't want to go ahead and you don't want to go switch these because that doesn't help you. But instead, what you want to do is you want to multiply. So multiply both sides by 4.9, right? And then you get 4.9 cancels out with the 4.9 over here. And you're left with your unknown side. And how you find that is just multiplying 4.9 times sine of 53. OK. So 3.91 is what I get here, 3.91. And now you have two pieces of information for this triangle, and you can solve for the third. Okay? So take a minute, see if you can finish that on your own. Find x now. You take the last step on your own, see what you can do. Okay, so if you finish up number one there, the 3.91, okay, is part of a, the second triangle, and I rewrote the triangle out there. Please label your diagrams. Please label your diagrams. Draw the triangles out if you, if you have to. That's great. Make sure you show your steps, okay? Don't miss this step because you might multiply them when you mean to divide, right? So try and show all your work, label your diagrams, do all that stuff so you don't miss anything. That's all, just so you don't miss anything because some of you are missing stuff. So 5.19 should be uh, your answer for X there, okay? I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Okay, so you guys do question number two right now, and I'll come around and take a look and see how you're doing, okay? Do question yeah, number two. Can I ask my question? Uh, yeah. Okay, so for number two A, what you want to do is you want to find X first. You're given two sides of a right triangle. So use Pythagoras' theorem, right? And you should get X equals 12.7 centimeters. So once you have that one, you have, here's an angle, and you have the adjacent uh, side and the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, that's the cosine. 
So use the cosine of 48 equals 12.7 over y. So then those two can switch. y equals 12.7 over cos 48. y equals 18.98 uh, or something like that. They go to one decimal place, so 19.0 centimeters. Okay? And I think most of you got there um, not for number two. Yeah, question? So example two, uh, in the second part of this lesson here, these ones are a bit tricky, I think, because we have multiple angles and we have overlapping triangles. Okay, so sometimes these can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're not given a diagram. So let's read through example two, and um, let's go over a couple things. All right, a flagpole is supported by two guy wires. First of all, guy wires, um, not like, you know, hey, cool guy, not like that, but a guy wire is like a, almost like a guiding wire, guy wire. So they are support wires that are attached to the pole and attached to the ground somewhere. Oh, so two guy wires, like the big cables. Oh. Yeah, like the big, big cables. All right. They're attached to a peg in the ground that is four meters from the base. So they give you the diagram here. Well, actually, they don't give you the diagram, but in your example, they give you the solution. So, so you might need to draw that pole and then two wires from two different spots on the pole, and they connect to this part in the ground that's four meters away. All right. The, uh, the guy wires have angles of elevation. So remember, angles of elevation are always from the horizontal going upward that would be an angle of elevation, okay? And so the two angles of elevation, one for the first wire, one for the second one. And you see how they have them labeled here? There's 35, there's 45. So we have overlapping triangles. Both of these triangles have a 90 degree angle. And I'll outline the first one in red. So the one with the 35 degree is right here. That's that one, All right? The second one, in blue would be the triangle with the 45 degree angle at the ground, right? And here is the bigger blue one. So when you got overlapping triangles, that's, it's, it's kind of neat because you've got, the, they share some angles. This one is the same. And they share this side as well. So you can basically, you can draw both angles. So this is the bigger one. Here's 45, sorry, it's a little messy there. But it looks like this, right? There's one, and here is the other one. Doesn't go up quite as high. 35 degrees, still 90, still 4, and this is X. So do you see how I pulled those two triangles out of that one diagram? Yeah? Okay. And some of them share some common characteristics. That's the angle there and the side there. All right. So here's the question. Now you have to read the questions carefully because you might think, oh, I'm going to find X and Y, and I'm done. You gotta read the question, right? You gotta read the question. So for this one, it says, how much higher up the flagpole is the top guy wire attached? So I'm not looking for X only. I'm not looking for Y only. I'm actually looking for this difference right here. How much higher is the top one attached? So you have to find X and Y and find the difference between them. Does that make sense? So it's really important to read the questions. Okay, so it looks like we have, um, with this angle, we have opposite side involved and we have adjacent side. So what's that one, what's that gonna be? What trig function is that gonna be? With the O and the A, that's? Cosine. Oh, wait a second, oh, that's tangent. Sokatoa? What is it? Sokatoa, T-O-A is tangent, O. A. Okay. I'm looking for I'm looking for other people to answer. Not just one. Just one special special guy. Okay? So that's why I'm kinda looking around here. Okay? Did you say something? It has to be loud enough for my to reach my ears. Tan. Okay, thank you. That's right. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, I appreciate your answer. It's gotta be loud enough so I can hear. I'm getting old, you know. Alright. So we have two triangles, we can figure out X and Y, and they did that for you here. So they figured out X, they figured out Y, now guess what? You gotta find the difference, and that's the answer to question A. So again, read the questions. Okay, so, oh, what does uh, B say? B says, how long is each guy wire? Okay, 
So what we have to find is, um, oh, where's my pen? We have to find the hypotenuses, the hypotenuses of these two triangles. Well, when you get this number right here, you can use Pythagoras' theorem because you'll have this one and this one, and you can solve for this one. Or, or you don't even need this one because you can use uh, which one? Adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? A and H. Which one goes along? Cosine. You could use cosine without even solving for uh, Y first. That's right. Okay? And that's how you find A and B. So you could use Pythagoras or you could use um, cosine. Okay. Okay, let's do a question together. Build your skills. Oh, I like these ones. These are some of my favorite ones right here. Okay, let's do question number one. So this is a question that you'll get, and the diagram is really handy. Sometimes you'll have to make your own diagram with these. So let's, let's figure out how they work. Okay, from the top of a 200 meter tall office building, that's pretty tall, so we're at the top here, right here. The angle of elevation, so that's the angle that's from the horizontal going upward. The angle of elevation to the top of another building is 40 degrees. So you see here's the 40 degrees. It's the angle of elevation from the top of this building to the top of that building. The angle of depression. Now, we have elevation, we have depression. So remember, the angle of depression from horizontal goes down. Okay, To depress means to push it down. So this angle of depression is 25, and that's where you get this number 25 from. All right, is everybody on the same page with me here so far? Understand what we're doing here? All right. So we know that this, this is 200 meters. Well, that's really handy. Uh, because guess what? From the horizontal line right here, what's this? What's this length right here? We can figure that out right away, and that's going to be really important. What's this one? If it goes straight across, that means that this point right here is the same height as the building. So this is 200 meters as well. Okay. So in a question like this, you're going to have to. Um, kind of figure stuff like this out, okay? So this is 200. Now, that re is really helpful, isn't it? Because look at, I have a right triangle here that in involves an angle and the opposite side. And look at this. I want to find this side right here. I want to find this right here. So if I just redraw that triangle, I've got 200 here. I've got 25 here, and I want to find this one. Why do I want to do that? Well, if I can find this side, if I can find this side right here, then I have an angle, I have a side, and I can find the final side because I want to know how tall the second building is. So I've got 200 here, and I want to find this. So these are the two things I want to find. Okay? So let's make this one x. And this one, y, and the answer is going to be 200 plus y. Okay? Okay, so this is the tall building, is 200 plus y. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to do this question all in, uh, on your own from here on in. So find x, then find y, and then find your answer. We'll see how you do. Okay, take a minute to do that. Yeah. Okay, so for this question here, okay, the first step is to find x. Please show all your work, just like I'm showing here. Write out that tan equation. Isolate for x, show your answer. Over here, step two, you want to focus on the second triangle now. Tan of 40 is y over this newfound x value. Show your work, y equals this, add them both up for step three. You should get 559.9. So I want you guys to finish, okay? Any questions from the first part of this lesson that you didn't get finished? Um, and then uh, looks like number six and seven as well. And we'll start here uh, tomorrow on part two here, okay? So finish up to question number seven B.
forward tomorrow, and you have the rest of the class to work on that. Okay.